Hi guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at monitors and I'm going to be trying to give you some advice on how to choose a monitor if you're working in Photoshop or in any other photo editing software. So I'm assuming that you're working with a Windows desktop PC. In order to choose a good monitor, first of all, what we need to think about is what makes a bad monitor. So I've got here a monitor, which I don't think goes well with Photoshop. And I'm going to explain why it's a very good monitor. On the surface, this looks pretty good. It's got a refresh rate of 144 Hertz, which is better than most monitors. And if we look down at the specs for this monitor, you can see it's 27 inches, which is awesome. Uh, the panel manufacturer is Optronics, which is a very good manufacturer. The panel type is TN. The panel bit depth is 8 bits, 6 bits plus FRC. And the FRC is registered as yes, with colors at 16 millions. So what's wrong with this monitor? The only thing really that goes against this monitor when working with Photoshop is this panel type, TN. Now, TN stands for Twisted Nematic. It sounds a little bit like the name of a 1970s rock group. And it did come out, I think, actually in the 1970s. The technology is ancient, but it's tried and tested, which is why you find it on a lot of gaming monitors. It has a very fast response time. It allows you to see the action in sports, in movies. So there's a lot of good things about the TN monitor. I want to take a bit of time to explain this thing here of 8 bits, 6 bits plus FRC, because it turns out this is very important. 8 bits is the number of bits inside a JPEG. So if we want to see a JPEG properly, we need to be able to see 8 bits of information. Without 8 bits of information, we can't actually see all the colors inside the image. And since JPEGs are used both in photography and in design, I, th I think it's important that our monitor can support at least eight bits. So I'm going to very quickly try to de-jargonize FRC. If we take a look at a photograph like this, we see a sequence of images which kind of show a horse moving along, but they do look like a bunch of photographs that do not relate to each other, except one seems to be photographed after the other. Now, if we take these images and show them in a straight sequence, one after the other in rapid succession, what we see is different from a group of photographs. We see a single image which seems to be moving. It seems to be animated. And this idea that you can take a single image, show it quickly enough, and it seems to be animated is the basis, obviously, of TV and movies. And it's also the basis of FRC. Except in FRC or in frame rate control, the monitor flickers between several colors, a sequence of several colors, and you actually see not the sequence of colors, but a new color that is in between all the other colors. And that's the technique which is used to take a 6-bit monitor and to allow it to show all the colors in an 8-bit monitor. Now, to give you some idea of how important that is, 6 bits allows us to see just 2% of the colors in an 8-bit monitor. So basically, FRC is increasing the number of colors that a 6-bit monitor can display from 2% of 8-bit to 100% of those shown in an 8-bit monitor. And that's why you see 6 bits and 8 bits in the description. A similar technique is a technique called dithering. And dithering allows us to take just a few colors, for instance, in this case, black and white. And by dispersing them in a particular pattern, we actually get to see more shades. We see what looks like gray. Those techniques are used to increase monitors from 6 bits to 8 bits and from 8 bits to 10 bits. And the most popular technique for doing that nowadays is FRC. So whenever you see 6 bits plus FRC, it actually means 8 bits. And whenever you see 8 bits plus FRC, it means 10 bits. However, whenever you see TN, Twisted Nematics is not a color accurate technology. It doesn't have sufficient color accuracy. Let's move on to resolutions. Resolutions today are kind of moving from a standard monitor size of HD 1080 
to much, much larger resolutions. Probably the most important one which has emerged so far is the UHD size. And UHD is four times the resolution of HD. There's another one called 4K, which is just a little bit larger than UHD. And sometimes UHD is referred to as 4K as well. But basically, both UHD and 4K are around 16 to 9 or 17 to 9 in terms of their uh, ratio. That's mainly where the monitors are going to be over the next 5 to 10 years. The UHD is not just a resolution, it's actually a combination of different standards that you might find in a good monitor over the next few years. So if you're getting a UHD monitor, you're getting at least that minimum of 8 bits per channel. And that's going to be very good for Photoshop. So let's take a look at what a good monitor might look like. This is the HP HP Elite Display 270N. It's a 27-inch monitor that uses IPS WLED and it is UHD size, which is 3840 by 2160. Exactly four times the size of HD. Now, if we come down here, we'll see that the panel manufacturer is LG. The panel type is IPS and the panel bit depth is 10 bits. This one is 8 bits plus FRC. So with what's going on here is that we've got an IPS panel type. It generally produces very good color accuracy. The colors are also described as 30 bits, about 1 billion colors. 30 bits more or less means the same as 10 bits, and we'll see a bit more of that later on. And you can see here the description for the resolution is Ultra HD, which is 3840 by 2160. Since this monitor size is very popular with television screens, you'll find that computer screens will tend to resonate around that particular resolution. The pixel density is very high for this monitor, it's 163. Generally speaking, with UHD monitors, you get much higher pixel densities. For HD monitors, about 90 pixels per inch is normal. sRGB. sRGB is a color space which is used in computing, is used in printing, and is one of the main color spaces that you find in digital technology. This monitor covers 99%. All in all, this is what you would expect in a pretty decent monitor. One of the problems with IPS, which you don't find in TN, is something I'm going to discuss next. If you have an image like this in an IPS monitor, and it's got a really nice vignette around the edges, what you sometimes find is that the monitor will have right at the sides, right at the corners there, you have this kind of weird glow. It's purple, sometimes magenta, and sometimes it gets really noticeable. It does get noticeable mainly with dark images like this, with dark edges. It can cause problems if you're viewing images in full screen quite a lot. The TN monitors are inferior for color, so you don't want to go back to a TN monitor just because you're getting IPS glow. So I've got a comparison. So. I've got a comparison here between four monitors. And before I jump into the details, what I'm going to say is, you know, I'm not an expert on monitors. I'm just hoping that some of this stuff here will prove useful for you. But one way, if you sort of get lost in the fog and you've got way too much choice in your, in, in trying to find a monitor for use with, uh, with your software, one thing that you might do is to focus on these two brands, the Dell UltraShop range of monitors and the ASO range of monitors. Both of these have a good reputation, which they've earned over several years. Let's jump into this comparison. This is um, a comparison site on which I've chosen four monitors to look at. We've got a Samsung, a Dell UltraShop and two ASO Color Edge 
monitors and these monitors are all pretty decent we'll start off with the samsung samsung has a lot of decent monitors and you'll find that a lot of the panels are manufactured by samsung the technology that samsung really major in is a technology called pls and it's very very similar to ips also has almost all the same problems and advantages as IPS. So here we've got three IPS monitors and one SVA monitor for Samsung. The IPS monitors suffer from this problem called IPS Glow that I've already discussed. The SVA or vertical alignment, I don't know what S stands for, but VA in this case stands for vertical alignment. Those types of monitors, generally speaking, don't have as much light bleed as the, as the IPS monitors. So if you see VA in the panel type, that's a pretty good indication that you're getting good contrast and also you're less likely to have light bleed at the edges. The Samsung is 8 bits. The other ones are 10 bits. On many desktop computers, this 10 bits is going to display as 8 bits simply because you don't have the right graphics card. In Photoshop, we can support 10 bits. You have to change a parameter and that is done inside the preferences. Photoshop won't tell you whether your monitor is 10 bits compatible, whether your hardware is 10 bits compatible. It will just allow you to turn on 10 bits, which it and Microsoft Windows refers to as 30 bits. Microsoft Windows from Windows 7 supports 10-bit uh, uh, displays or 30-bit displays. None of these are FRC. And some of them have what's known as an LUT or a lookup table. Uh, the LUTs are an internal process that the monitor uses to increase the quality of the image that you're viewing on the monitor. It doesn't change the image itself. And the resolution, only one of these is an Ultra HD 4K. The other one at 1496 times 2160 is what they call Cinema 4K. It's very similar to this guy, but just a little bit wider. And the other one, QHD, is uh, another very um, popular 16 to 9 format. Notice that the Samsung, the 8 bit one, is 1920 by 1080. This is great, but it's probably not going to future proof you. These two at Ultra HD and 4K HD, those two probably are going to be to some extent future proof. However, having said that, I would always recommend updating your monitor once every couple of years, at least. Monitors tend to, to sort of lose their performance over time. When we look at the Adobe RGB, notice that the newer monitors, the larger resolution monitors, are all 100% about 100% Adobe RGB. If you do photography, this will probably mean something to you because Adobe RGB is used quite a lot in photography. One thing I also want to mention before we go further is that the Samsung monitor is actually, uh, it's, it's got what's known as a radius curvature or a radius of curvature. And this means that it's a curved monitor. Curved monitors are not just a gimmick. When you've got a little bit of a curvature in the, in the monitor, when you're using VA or vertical alignment panel types, it tends to reduce that um, light bleed even more. We get down to the ergonomics. One thing to point out is that some of these monitors have a right pivot. The pivot is the ability of the monitor to flip from landscape to portrait. And it's a feature that you find in a surprisingly large number of monitors. Finally, looking at the connectivity, you can see these monitors have a very large number of HDMI and DisplayPort ports. What you'll also notice is that the Samsung has only got HDMI 1.4 and DisplayPort 1.2, whereas the other ones have got HDMI 2.0. HDMI 2.0 is obviously the newer version. HDMI and DisplayPort, they are specifications that are still receiving upgrades. And as monitors become more powerful, these technologies, these specifications become more capable. So you should always try to get the most recent cable that fits, that works with your monitor. A lot of people really like DVI. And one of these monitors has DVI. DVI is no longer, it's been abandoned. So it's no longer being updated. Uh, the same goes for VGA, which is a very ancient standard, but some people still like to use that. 
So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found some of that useful. And if you found any error that I've made in this video, just leave a comment in the comments just so that I can correct it some way or another in the next video on monitors. But that's it for now. We'll see you later. If you like the video, hit the like button, share the video with someone who you think might like it, and we'll see you next time. Bye.